Hi, I'm Susan Platt, and welcome to Platitudes, Find Your Roar. This morning I'm with, and we're already laughing, so you know this is going to be a fun interview. Um, this morning I'm with Jennifer Wexton, my state senator, um, and the woman who is our Democrat nominee to run and beat Barbara Comstock this year in Virginia's 10th Congressional District. If you hear a little bit of noise in the background, we're in her office, and it is filled with men and women getting ready to go, <laughs> ready, ready to go out and work for Jennifer. Um, but Jennifer, I, I start all these uh, podcasts, but they tell me we're doing vlogs too, so I, I'm not of the younger generation, so I'm going to call it a podcast. So I asked these women what helped them, or what did they have in their life that helped them find their roar? And some women say they found it multiple times. What helped you find your roar? Well, I think for me, it's kind of an ongoing process mm -hmm. because, you know, I first found my roar uh, when I went to law school and I wanted to use my law degree to help people. And I was able to do that in my career. And then when I saw elected officials, uh, pretty much all of whom happen to be men at the moment, uh, acting in ways that were not, you know, consistent with my values and the best interests of the majority of people, I, I found my roar to step up and run for office. Scary, a little bit at first, but at, fulfilling? At first, yeah, absolutely, because you have to put yourself out there. I mean, it's very different. You gotta call strangers and ask them for money. It takes you outside of your comfort zone. Right. But uh, very rewarding, and you know, it was fantastic to meet so many people who were so thankful that, that I was stepping up and taking this, this plunge. So this morning you had uh, a little forum here with um, people talking about women's health care. Mm -hmm. When you hear some of these stories of what women have gone through in the past and how we don't want to go back and make sure we have better health care choices in the future, what do you think? What is your response? How do you think you can be helpful to these women? Well, there's a lot of ways. I mean, one of them is, is one of the things that is really concerning to me is that all the progress that women have made over the past, you know, four or five decades uh, can be taken away in, in you know, a very short amount of time. And I feel that, that there's a danger that we become complacent mm -hmm. because there's a generation who didn't have to go through what our mothers did, right. um, you know, to fight for. And we see it in all areas, of really, of civil rights. Um, and so, so this is something where there really is a danger to women's health care uh, coming from the administration. Uh, coming from everything from the executive, uh, from the president, to Congress, which you know are all in Republican hands, and the United States Supreme Court. I don't think that we can count on them to give women, uh, you know, to to stand up for women's access to reproductive health care anymore. You mentioned um, our moms fighting. I was with you primary night when you won the primary. And you looked around and you said, I've got to see my mom. I've got to see my mom. <laughs> what was that feeling like when I saw the two of you come together and hug? Oh, it was wonderful. Because, you know, because my mom, you know, she's, she was the first person I thanked in, uh, in, in my primary speech because I thanked her for being a strong, independent w woman to, and who taught me to be a strong, independent woman. And of course, then I have to thank Andrew, my husband, for putting up with a strong, independent woman, <laughs> which is not always easy. How did she? How did she teach you to do that? Well, she taught me by doing. You know, she she went back to school and got her PhD while I was in elementary school, um, and she and a friend of hers took turns, you know, watching us after school so that she could go back to school. You know, she's always been a working mom, mm -hmm. her career oriented, very, you know, professional, uh, accomplished woman, uh, but also, you know, made time for the family and, and, and took great care of us, um, really was a fantastic role model for the fact that you can be a great mom and a great, you know, lawyer or state senator or member of Congress or whatever it is that you want to be in your career. And they're not mutually exclusive. What's her PhD in? Economics. So she taught you well. Yeah. <laughs> we talked a lot about the bell-shaped curve. In our <laughs> um, you talked about your mom. What are your boys and your husband, Andrew, what are your boys saying now about this race? You know, we're, we're in Northern Virginia, which is the Washington, D.C. media market. Mm -hmm. Every talking head there is sees what you do every day. I've been there, and so right. I understand. Sure. So your boys must hear about this beyond their mom. 
Oh, sure. What do they and, think? and before before the talking heads started to hear about it, kids heard about it first because the, the TV commercials, they started on YouTube pre-roll. Mm -hmm. So I'd go places before we, you know, before we were on broadcast TV. And uh, and it's funny because the kids would be like, point at me because um, <laughs> they'd recognize me from the from the ads from that. But, you know, I think that that they they're they're used to it because I've been involved, you know, running for office or, or in office for you know much of their childhoods um, but they 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 know that I'm doing it because I want to make sure that I create the best world for them going forward mm -hmm. and they know how important it is that we you know bring our country back to the values that we believe in so they're they're cool about it you know Jamie my 13 year old he uh, he'll, he'll tell me about how kids will be like that's Jennifer Wexton's son and he said a girl came up to him at school last week and and said Jennifer Wexton's your mom, right? And, and he said, yeah. And she said, she's amazing. <laughs> so it's great. That's I've, wonderful. One of, one of the things that's really been fantastic for me is how many, you know, young women and girls are really excited about, you know, my candidacy and the fact that there's a woman running and who, who represents their values and is looking out for them. Sometimes, as we discussed in this media market, things can get pretty tough. Um, and, and a lot of women I know that think about running for office think, oh, I don't know, it's just so hard. Mm -hmm. It's so nasty. How do you get through the day when the attacks start flying furiously? Well, I knew going into this, I mean, I know Barbara Comstock and her and her game plan and her playbook. And, what is and that? That's attack, 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 uh, lie, uh, you know, and, and attack. Uh, and drag me down in order to, to bring herself up. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't believe necessarily in that kind of zero-sum game, but I knew that was what was going to happen. So, you know, I try to focus on a positive issue-focused uh, campaign and, and talking about why people should vote, you know, for me rather than just against someone else. I think, you know, there's so much negativity in trying to tear people down. I think we need to focus on, you know, get away from the gloom and doom and back to the hope and change. Um, but as far as, you know, the nasty TV ads, it's no fun, but it's, it's another example of what I've been doing my whole career, which is standing up to bullies. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just say, oh, it's too, it's too hard or, you know, or I, I, don't, I don't have the stomach to put up with that because then they win. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and so I've, I have found that it, it, it does not, I mean, I don't like it, but it's it's a necessary part of running for office and I've I've gotten as with most things in this campaign a lot of people are just saying thank you so much and you know you're very brave and I mean I make it a joke when I when I start a lot of my speeches I say have any of you seen my opponents of advertising and they're like yes and I say well you may not recognize me maybe you recognize me now <laughs> you know so they're like ha 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 you know but but you know, make light of it because yeah. people people see it for what it is. You know, it used to be um, in politics we didn't ever want to say that our opponent or somebody else uh, who was an elected official was lying. Um, it's become so prevalent now to say that someone is lying. We used to say, oh, they're misleading, they're misunderstood, they're not exactly telling the truth. Why do you think now lie is used so much of the time? when it wasn't before? Is it a disrespect? Is it that this, the outrageous things are being said that we have to say something back? What do you I think, think it is? I think it's because because lying is becoming you know more acceptable among certain parts of the population. Mm -hmm. We have a president who talks about alternative facts. Um, you know that 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 we need to call out these lies for what they are and that's what Barbara Comstock's been doing and the NRCC have been doing in their ads when they're attacking me. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to call it what it is. On one of the ads, I think they have you as a traffic commissioner. Were you ever a traffic commissioner? I don't even know what a traffic commissioner <laughs> is. So that's another lie, I guess, huh? Well, I'm on the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission, as are, you know, 16 other elected officials. Right. But it's, you know, it's not a traffic commissioner. So. What do you think is, if you can go back in your memory, all the, how many doors have you knocked in your campaign? In, in the entire campaign? In this, after the primary? 100, over 100,000. Over 100 doors, 100,000 100, doors. What is maybe one of the funniest times when you knocked on a door and that someone said something to you? Oh gosh, 
you know. Um, I haven't knocked on 100,000 doors this campaign. <laughs> my, my team. But has. the ones that you've knocked on. Well, you know, the thing that is amazing to me is, is how many times people recognize me from other times that I've knocked on their doors. Mm -hmm. Years ago, you know, when it's starting in 2011, and people will say, I remember you because you came and knocked on our door and you were the only one who had done it back in 2011 or 2000, whatever. Um, so people do that. People are just wonderful. They want to invite me in and feed me. <laughs> you know, they're just, it's, it's always very, uh, you know, very inspiring to have that, that face to face, uh, interaction and things like that. I don't know that I have a lot of funny stories. No, uh, you know, no naked people or anything <laughs> like that, which I know some people have experienced uh -huh. on their, on their, on their, uh, doors, but no, I can't say I've had any, I've had any of those. Well then let's tell me, are you having fun? Yes. What's the most fun thing you've done? Fun. It's it's fun to it's fun. I don't know. I don't know whether fun is the word or inspiring. It's just it's amazing to see the energy on the ground from all these people and all these groups, and just go to Canvas kickoffs and people who say I've never done this before and I'm so excited to do it now, and just to see the inspiration and the energy and the positive. You know the positive attitudes coming out of people to 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 improve our situation and because mm -hmm. they know that tomorrow can be better than today and that's just so wonderful to me because I know a lot of people were feeling really despondent and upset and I'm not seeing that anymore I'm seeing a lot of inspiration and motivation and people coming together to have good things happen for a change well um, then tell me is there one story that someone said to you, whether it was a happy one or a sad one or um, an anxiety-ridden one, that really stuck with you? I've had a lot of um, parents with kids with disabilities who are really concerned about about what the future holds for their children. Um, you know, these attacks on Medicaid, attacks on the social safety net. Um, that they're really concerned that you know that that when they're gone, uh, that they're not going that their children are not going to be able to have a productive future and they're not going to be taken care of, and that's just one example of, of people's fears, you know, um, meeting with young uh, young people who may have a parent who is undocumented, mm -hmm. but has lived in this country for decades, and their fear that that you know that they could come home one day. And their mom or they, their dad would be gone, uh, and that that's know, pretty scary. And that and that their home, you know, that they wouldn't be able to stay in their home, and and they could lose it. That they wouldn't be able to pay the mortgage. That they would have to drop out of college to help, you know, pay the mortgage and support their siblings. Um, it's you know stories like that stick with you. Tell me about your husband. Is he is he picking up the load at home? Absolutely, yeah. He's 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 done that for a long time. I mean, because you know I've been down in uh -huh. Richmond for sessions so much, so he's he's got it down to a pretty good system. And you know, our boys are thirteen and fifteen now, so they're a lot more self sufficient than they were when mm -hmm. we uh, when we started this adventure. But uh, you know, so far so good. We we did we did adopt two dogs a uh, couple two years ago, so. So they're they're also a handful. Too. And what are their names? Uh, Wanda and Lady Bear. Where'd that come from? They are lab rescue dogs, and we like their names. <laughs> so I have we're dog lovers too. I had to put my uh, say goodbye to my one shadow dog on I'm Saturday, sorry. and it's amazing how they just enter your life and they just steal your heart. Mm -hmm. Do they campaign with you ever at all? No, they do not have. Uh, they're 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 they don't really have as we as we call it market manners. <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, so you've been a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. You've been a state senator. Yep. You're a lawyer. Why did you ultimately decide to, to run for Congress? It's, it's a jump, but, you know, it's not a big jump. I mean, you've been in public service basically your whole life. Mm -hmm. um, why Congress? Why now? Because, you know, looking at the Trump administration, uh, looking at the attacks on how how he started up, he started off with you know the Muslim ban, uh, racist and unconstitutional Muslim ban, which is antithetical to what we stand for in this country, uh, and then proceeded to attack the free press, attack an independent judiciary, uh, attack the United States intelligence community, attacks on women, immigrants, the environment. 
um, and see congressional Republicans completely abdicating their role as an independent branch of government, as a check on the presidency. Um, I, you know, as the mom of, of two kids, I didn't want to have to look at my kids five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and say that I didn't do everything I could to get our country back to the ideals that it was founded on. And so that's why I'm running for Congress. So you're part of the angry mom mob, right? <laughs> I don't think there is an angry mom mob. There's a motivated mom mm -hmm. uh, mob. Uh, I don't even know if a mob is, is an appropriate term, but you know, we, I, I'm not, I don't see anger. I see, I see hope, I see optimism. I see an energized group. I see, uh, I see women stepping up because we know that we can do better. Uh, because we know that 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 what is coming out of Washington is not consistent with our values and what we want for our kids. Well, what is the what is the most uh, most often issue that people bring up to you on the campaign trail? Healthcare. Healthcare is top of everybody's list, but we also have been hearing a lot about gun violence prevention, which is something that we that did not used to be as much of a motivating factor. Um, we have new Moms Demand groups and other gun violence prevention groups that have popped up throughout the district, including you know in places that you wouldn't expect. Like we have a very uh, fast growing and pretty big and very vibrant group in Winchester uh, of Moms Demand volunteers. And you know, and and they're looking for common sense gun violence prevention reforms, um, and and that's something that Congress has not been able to deliver. And where Barbara Comstock is way outside the mainstream, you know, she's one of the top recipients in money from the NRA. She's carried their water in the General Assembly and again in Congress, uh, and it's not consistent with you know keeping our kids and our community safe, which is what these moms and parents want. What do your boys say about that? Are they ever um, fearful going to school? Well, or do they th do they talk about it in the classroom? Sure, they do. Yeah. Well, they have lockdown drills, you know, and that's you know that's one of the things that we we never had to grow up with that with that, um, and it's you know we need to do better for our kids. One of the our local Moms Demand founder here in Loudoun County, she said that you know when she sent her son for kindergarten, the first week of kindergarten, he came home and he said, Mom, today we had a lockdown drill, and my place to hide is behind the backpacks on the side of the room. Oh. And, and she said, you know, that's it. You know, because uh, like a backpack, having a child hide behind right. a backpack is, is, our, is our plan. Uh, we need to do better for our kids. I think you missed the generation. It was my generation that uh, when we were in, in grade school, we had drills. But it wasn't the same kind of drill. It was the it was the get under your desk. It was for get the under your desk bomb, right? or get in the hall. <laughs> and somehow that was going to protect us from the nuclear bomb and fallout. I guess in some ways it's the same thing now. Mm -hmm. it, are these drills really going to save a lot of lives, or do we need we need to do better, right? Well, we need to do better. We need to do better. And and you know and the the epidemic of mass shootings and school shootings, you know, we've done nothing to prevent that from happening. Um, and we need to do better. In talking to other women across Virginia, um, everybody's kind of looking to make a difference in some way. Mm -hmm. What would be the one piece of advice besides going and voting on November 6th this year to the thing. polls, what would be the one piece of advice you would give to other women out there who are looking to make a difference, whether it be in their business, with their family, or in their community, or the state, or in politics? There's got to be at least one piece of advice you think would be uppermost in your mind to give to them. Well, I think for every woman she need, and for every person, um, you know, my path to elected office came through public service, uh, and it came through my passion for helping others. So for them, I would say follow your passion, follow your heart. You know, what whatever you feel strongly about, and whether it's an issue based it thing. Or if it's being, uh, if it's creating a charity for a particular group of people, or giving back in some other ways, there's lots that you can do, and you just need to find your own roar and what motivates you and, and where your heart takes you. It, with all the pressure right now in the campaign, what is it you do to kind of slough it off? How do you, how do you 
how do you get out your frustrated energy or your your uh, your tiredness or your anxiety well I try to go for a, a short run most mornings uh, although it's been a little bit more challenging in the cold <laughs> but mm -hmm. but that's some nice time to just think and have mm -hmm. quiet and you know get in my head and and of course the endorphins always help too um, thank you very much Jennifer Wexton for joining me today for platitudes, find your roar. And one thing I do at the end, Jennifer, and you can either look at me like I've lost my mind or join me in it, is I say, find your roar. Okay. Find your roar. You want to roar with me? Yes. Roar! I got lots of practice with those, uh, with all the opposition uh, ads. <laughs>